Hi, and welcome to my playhouse. And today I'm just messing around in the basement, so I thought that might be interesting. And I've gotten some packages from China and something from a subscriber that I visited. So um, let's um, let's just go see what I'm up to. Um, and I'll figure out a title for this video along the way. <laughs> so I was just uh, taking this laptop battery apart and it's a, it's a Dell. Uh, I found something funny in it. At some point they, they thought that the cells was going to be mounted to this strip but then they replaced that strip and did something else and well, well, I don't know that it looked kind of wasteful in here so I was just taking that up I uh, ran out of cells to charge uh, or cells that I had taken apart so I needed to do some more uh, this is the really tedious part of uh, of doing these batteries. Oh, there might be a new sound in here today. Might just go and see that. Down here, down here, I have a. Um, I think it's a kerosene oven or something, or a stove, and it's a heater. I've had this for ages. This was actually my. 13 years my birthday present from work when I became 30 so it's, uh, it's that, uh, unfortunately that's over 10 years ago so it's usually over here just um, stored there but um, well it was so cold down here it was 11 degrees and I've set it to to maintain 20 degrees and Right now it's doing that, it says that it's 20 degrees, so it should, um, it doesn't shut off, but it, it goes down in um, in how much heat it produces. So right now it's it's kind of noisy, but it, it will turn itself down and just maintain 20 degrees. So uh, yeah, it's so much nicer, you can, you can heat your socks. <laughs> socks. So back to the batteries. Yeah, this is the most tedious part of taking these batteries apart, um, according to me. And um, I have this little piece of... Oh, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure what, what that is called. I know what it's called in Danish. I'm not entirely sure what it's called in English. And I always cut myself on these little things. Uh, the batteries has been welded onto here. And they, when you, when you pull it like that, well, these are very sharp and pointy, so um, I need to remove those uh, mostly for my own sake because I always cut myself on those. So I'm gonna remove those. Make sure that they don't stick out as much. So yeah, and there is some some something on there. So another battery ready to go, and I'm just gonna measure every battery to make sure that there's none of them that is just totally dead oh like this one that's not a good battery that one is not good either this is another disaster how can this pack be totally dead oh. whoa oh huh? none of them has a vault interesting weird I think we'll try and charge them in this one over here and just connect them to my laboratory power supply and just give them a tiny bit of a voltage so that I don't usually get batteries this bad. Okay, mounted them in here and their combined voltage is 0 0.05 volts. That's, uh, I don't think uh, they might not be that good anymore. So I have my laboratory power supply and I'm going to connect them to uh, to here I've set this to three volts half an amp and it's, it's definitely taking in half an amp and let's see if the voltage goes up yeah we had 1.2 volts 1.3 volts so we'll let them charge for a little bit maybe turn down the power 
200 milliamps. So I have some packages that has come in from China that I thought we should have a look at. First, I have the connector for my uh, power banks, and these are the. Well, they have a they have a number on them. These are the XT60s, which means that they can carry 60 amps. So, um, well, that's that's pretty good. Uh, someone suggested that I should get the XT90s or XT120. I thought they were, I think they were called, but really, I don't need more than 60 amps. They're supposed to go on these connectors over here, so I can disconnect a bank fairly easily for maintenance or something. So, yeah, they they came in. That's cool. That's a nice little connector. I like it. So that goes in there. Then we have another thing also for the battery bank. This is the metal strip that I put on there. I have the last little bit that I have laying around. And this um, should be the same thing, I hope. Uh, that's the interesting thing with buying stuff in China. You're not always entirely sure that you're gonna get what you thought you were gonna get. But well, this looks pretty good, so probably okay. So, well, I don't really have an excuse for not doing that. Then the last little package here is a USB USB to RJ45 connector, and that's really for this project with the with the tiny computer to control the charge controller. Um, but I was so fortunate that when I bought another charge controller, they gave me a cable. Uh, this one was ordered before that. So I don't know if... At the moment, I do not have anything to use this for. I think the cable they supplied uh, has a bigger chance of working than this. I have some small bags that I took from work. It had parts for uh, some server. Um, actually a very expensive server. but. I have been messing around with my resistors, so let's just see that. Over here I have some cap units for resistors and I've been collecting resistors since I was probably 10 years old and when I began to, to get some money I, I thought I want a total cabinet and a, a little box with uh, resistors for each of these sizes and well the truth is it, it can be years between I actually need one of these so I was watching EEV block and he had another design where he had like different sizes of resistors in the same uh, little box so in this box there is 4.7 ohms kilo ohms and mega ohms so there is like three different resistors in one box. That was better usage of the space here. So I am very, I'm trying to empty out this one. This is another one that I had because uh, with one little box for each resistor uh, size, you need a lot of drawers. So um, yeah, with this system, I should be able to fit all of them in this little drawer. So. Um, but to uh, to be able to see one resistor from another one, and um, I decided to put them in a little bag, and I ran out. So uh, I've been collecting small bags for for that purpose. So there is the small bags. I want to get rid of this tape, though. No reason to have that on there. Have some more bags here. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So to try and clean up stuff down here, I also got out and got some small boxes. These were 12 and a half kroners a piece from, well, Karl Nubor. So, uh, and in one of them I've hidden something that we should have a look at. Yep. I visited a subscriber this last week. Um, just uh, th that was some other business, but he had collected a whole bunch of stuff that he thought that I might like. So uh, here are some K 
cables. These, I think these might be for starting a car. A bit thin for that, but well, I'm sure the cable is good for something. Maybe I have a battery charger that these would be perfect for. So, otherwise we have, here we have a charger for two 18650s. So that, that can charge two of those. And he has, <laughs> oh, there was a lot of soldering tin here. So thank you very much. Oh, his name was Marcus. So I want to give him that shout out. Thank you for the soldering tin, Marcus. And also there was a, this is a network card USB to RJ45. And it contains a network card so you can USB 2 to fast ethernet connector. So for a Raspberry Pi or something weird probably. I have been in a situation where I was needing one of these and I borrowed one from my cousin and now I have my own, thank you very much. And he has been saving cells for me. That's very nice. Some nice colored one. So we might just measure if there is any power on any of these, if they are good cells. See, he has had the same problem as me. This spot welded shit is impossible to get off. Or it's not impossible, but it's definitely pretty, pretty hard. Really irritating to try and remove. But, oh, cool. More cells for my bank. Awesome. Then the last pieces. I believe these were USB chargers for just one cell. So you can connect one cell and I don't remember if it was power bank and USB charger. It would be nice if it did both. So it could charge it. So you could kind of have two batteries and a charger. And you could hook up your USB connector and draw power for it or put power to it. Uh, I'm not sure which way this goes. I'm sure I could find out. It's There's only these two connectors, a minus and a plus, so you probably just hook up a battery and then you see if does, it, uh, does the power come out or do you have to put the power in. So that's uh, pretty, pretty easy. And I got three of those. Awesome. He has probably also gotten these from China and, and they really cost next to nothing, but the waiting time to get them, that's always the irritating part. Then he had a funny little cell, 1300 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts, and it has some protection electronics in here. Thank you very much to Marcus. It's a lot of, lot of fun toys. I have cleaned all of these batteries and all but one seems to be okay. So all of these are over three volts. So that's fantastic. And I've removed all the things on the ends of them. Oh, this one is, come on. I need a good connection to you. 3.8, that was good. This is actually too high, 4.24. That's, uh, that's over the top. But this one, oh, well, it's um, 0, 0.00 something. So that's a, uh, I don't know, it's probably bad. So 12 good batteries and I already had the one that was overcharged, uh, discharging over here. And I also have a couple of power supplies uh, where I took the PCB out. Uh, I don't remember this. This one was from the surveillance camera in the data center and this is not working. But I want to take out all of the components of it and uh, keep the ones that looks good. Like this capacitor. I've already measured it and it's still good. So something else has failed in here. I'm not gonna bother trying to repair it but I want all the components. And to do that, I'm gonna heat it with a heat gun and just let the components almost drop out of there. So we need to uh, need to mount this. There, and I can start heating it.
this uh, PCB is more or less done. Don't think there is anything more on there that could be interesting for anything. Uh, the hardest thing was this thing uh, with kind of a heat sink and and four components and well probably most the heat sink that removed a lot of heat from the soldering so uh, I could keep heating that until the heat sink was heated up as well so I could have dismounted that well yeah it came out There's a little bit of damage here. <laughs> yeah, I have definitely heated it. That took a little bit longer than normal. I mean, the vice over here is hot because of those heat sinks. Ooh. I didn't get all of it and I destroyed the fuse holder on here. Doesn't matter. But in this one, don't, don't want to waste more time on that. So I got these components out of it. Awesome. Pretty, pretty nice hole. Cool. So now the different parts go in different drawers. I of course do not have drawers for everything, but I have drawers for a lot of stuff. Uh, what is this? Well, this is also kind of a tiny little coil, so well, kind of coils. Another little box for connectors, these, uh, these connectors. So if I ever need to use that in a project, well, I have a couple of different ones to pick from. Ah, this one really shouldn't be in there. This one is a good one. This one has a bit of protection, I think, and some noise removing. Something that someone has tried to do on this one as well. So Awesome. Even connectors like this, I have a little drawer for them. There's a lot of weird connections, connectors in there, but they go in there. Capacitors go over here. Oh, 1200 microfarads. That's not... that doesn't go over here. Here is the big one that was 120. That goes in that one. It only has one body down there, so if I ever um, need a 120 microfarad, well, now I have two. So let's see, we have another one here. That's 22 microfarads. I do believe that I have <coughs> quite a bit of those. There's another one. Okay, so I want to mount these connectors on the wires here. And I have some heat shrink that I'm going to be putting on first. And uh, just want to... The connector says that this is plus and this is minus. And I have just been up visiting the internet and found out that this, the female part here, that's the one that goes on the battery. And then the male connector here, that's... Um, that's for the charging slash discharging part of it. So just want to see how far we should uninsulate these. Cool, fine. So let's put some solder on the connector here. I'm gonna use Marcus's soldering tin that he gave me. There. To move this into position, oh, might, might just want to solder this connector as well. Give that some solder. I think we have a good connection there. I'm gonna put the heat shrink on here before I solder the next one because there's a lot of power between these leads and I do not want to short circuit that even by accident. So we'll put that on here. Awesome. Okay, I did the positive lead as well, so now this battery is done. Oh, hmm. 
This one is too long. It will have to go something like this. Okay, that will do. Cool. It's um, more or less completed. Uh, just want to have another one done before I connect them up to the charge controller. This is the other battery that I'm doing. I, I went through it last weekend actually and I marked all the batteries that was below 3.8 volts. Was that right? No, I'm missing one. There, 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 there and there. Okay. They were only just below 3.8 volts so I think it's all good. Some of these batteries has been sitting in a box for over one and a half year. So I will um, start soldering, make a solder joint to each of the batteries. So this really doesn't take long when you, uh, when you get down to it and do it. It takes a lot longer to, uh, to not do it. Now I'm um, doing the back of the the back of the battery is the, the negative side. Well, the solder doesn't stick as well to that because it takes longer to heat that side up. The positive lead is really quick. No problem. I switched to my own um, soldering tin here. It seems to work better. So, well, working on the battery bank. Um, and this was just a video of me messing around in the basement which I really enjoy doing. Just doing random stuff, doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and um, then switching it up, doing something else. I really enjoy that, and I can do that for an entire day, um, sometimes, when I've got the time. Uh, oh, now we're doing the positive, it doesn't take long at all. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye!